Hey guys, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're doing the Schitt's Creek book tag. So this tag was created by Amy and Julie. I will leave their original videos linked down below. And basically they were doing it to celebrate the finale of Schitt's Creek that I'm pretty sure is happening on Tuesday, April 7th. I'm one of those people that doesn't have a way to watch them when they are like live coming out the first day. So I'm currently waiting for Netflix to eventually get the last season so I can binge watch that. But I have loved Schitt's Creek for a while and I thought this tag would just be really, really fun to do. As you guys can sort of see, I am wearing my Ooh David shirt that I've had for a while and have sort of worn to the point that the graphic on it is wearing down a little bit. But it looks like we do have 12 prompts and let's jump right into it. So the first few prompts we have are related to characters and the first one is Johnny Rose and that is to pick an uplifting book with a good message. For me, I'm going with Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. I love this book so much that I actually have three different copies of it and I just have always found this to be a like good comfort read but it definitely has uplifting messages for like friendship and creativity and like being your own person and I just really really enjoy this book. Then we have Moira Rose which is to pick an over-the-top character that you can't help but love. For this one, I am going with Tomaki from the Oron High School Host Club. I have read all 18 volumes of the manga, but I've also re-watched the anime multiple times, and I feel like he is the epitome of an over-the-top character. This is him on the cover of volume 17. He is just one of those ones that I do feel like could be a little bit annoying with how over-the-top he is, but as you read or watch or however you want to consume this media, you can't help but love him and his antics and he is just, you know, a great part of the ensemble cast, which I feel like Moira Rose is as well. Next we have David Rose and that is to pick a book that represents your aesthetic. And for me there was no question it had to be Aurora Rising. I am a sucker for blues and purples and space. So while I probably would wish this to be slightly more blue as well, the other part of it is right up my alley. I absolutely love this. I love this aesthetic and everything so much that my wedding was space themed and my son's baby shower was also space themed. I think almost every big event my husband and I have done has been space themed and I can't get over the covers of these books, but like the color scheme of this one specifically is my jam. And then we have Alexis Rose, and that is for the best character growth or arc. And for that one, I'm gonna go with Artemis Fowl. Again, this is another series that I love so much that I actually have two full sets in different covers. I went with the, these aren't the newest covers, this is like the, second to last version they have done of these um, because I feel like it shows Artemis Fowl very very well. The other like the newer covers that came out a couple years ago I do feel like show other characters like it shows him and Holly more on a level playing field however I do still feel like he had the best character growth and arc through this series. This is book one and book eight and he starts off as a like child genius, like a prodigy, but he's definitely an anti-hero and through the course of the eight books he becomes more heroic and selfless and I love these so much. And then we have Stevie Bud which is a book with your favorite ride or die friendship group. And for that I'm gonna go with my Buffy comics. I'm just picking one at random that has quite a few characters on it, but these comics obviously follow the Buffy TV show which had seasons 1 through 7 and so these start with season 8 and go through season 12. We don't have as many volumes in the later seasons but the friendships in here 
and the fact that they're not like necessarily perfect friendships but it is almost literally ride or die because of all the apocalypses and everything like that. I love these characters so much and that was part of the reason why I kept purchasing and reading the volumes. I am a little bit behind now. I think I got through season 10 potentially, but I definitely have not caught up to season 11 or 12. So I have been considering maybe doing some sort of Buffy graphic novel marathon and filming it. We shall see in the future, but I absolutely love the friendship dynamic, and so I had to include it here. Then we have Ted Mullins, which is your favorite book with an animal on the cover. Now, this is one where I struggled for a little bit, um, because off the top of my head, I couldn't really think of a favorite book with an animal on the cover. And then my husband sort of had an epiphany for me, I should say, and he's right. I do have a favorite book series with an animal on the cover. And that is going to be the Pig the Pug series by Erin Blabby. These are children's picture books that I had read some of previously, but as soon as I had my son, we have purchased all of them. So we have Pig the Pug, Pig the Winner, Pig the Elf, Pig the Star, Pig the Fibber, Pig the Stinker, and the most recent one that just came out in the United States the last couple months, Pig the Tourist. These are some of my favorite children's books. They rhyme, pig is like not the nicest pug around, and somehow always gets into situations and gets into trouble and has to like get his like comeuppance in the end. And I, I don't know, there's just something about these. They're very humorous as well. I feel like they were definitely written for kids and adults. And I do 100% think that these are my favorite books with an animal on the cover. Then we have Patrick Brewer, which is your ideal love interest. And I'm gonna be going with a book that I just finished yesterday, which is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love this story. And Simon, our love interest, is definitely an ideal love interest. Like, the way that he is described, he's not an asshole like some of the books that I have been reading lately that are like adult or new adult romances. He is smart and caring and the fact also that this love story isn't necessarily about a perfect relationship just really appeals to me somehow as well. And if you have not read this yet, I highly, highly recommend. Now we're moving on from the characters into more just well-known things from the series. And the first one is Community Service. This is to pick a book that you've read for school, a buddy read, during a readathon for a challenge that you had low expectations for, but it ended up being amazing. For this one, I'm going with Night of the Living Trekkies. This is by Kevin David Anderson and Sam Stahl. I've had this for a while and it is definitely a, like a secondhand used book. It's a quirk book which I haven't really read too much from them but I have read some other ones that didn't quite hit right because these books are weird. They're quirk books. Um, and this is one that I read for the Booktubeathon back when it was Booktubeathon, not, not the Reading Rush, like so a couple years ago. And I didn't have too many expectations for it. Um, this is about a Star Trek convention that a zombie apocalypse ends up starting at. And like I said, it just seems like it would be a sort of weird, funny situation. Um, but I loved it. I think I give it five out of five stars. The zombies weren't your typical zombies. There were actually high stakes in here that I necessarily wasn't expecting, even though I probably should have because it is a zombie novel. It just also has Star Trek and Trekkie stuff in it, which I absolutely loved, and I had a great time reading it. So, yeah, I don't know what my expectations were. I had, like, almost no expectations, but it surprised me so much, and I loved it. Then we have Ew, David, which is a book that you DNF because the content was too much for you. For that one, I'm going to be going with 1Q84. This is not the most recent book I have DNF'd, but it is something that I DNF'd last month. 
and I only ended up reading about 26 pages of it. This is like a 1,200 page beast and I DNF'd it because in our second chapter, our main male character is caught up in the fact that he has a memory of his mom having sex with a guy who is not her husband. Um, but not only that, apparently this memory plagues him throughout his life so that when he thinks about it, he just runs it over and over and over in his head for anywhere from like 30 seconds to a few minutes and is unable to function. And I don't know why that was necessary. I'm not going to find out why that was necessary. Um, he also, with another guy, talks about an underage girl in a way that could be construed as like a little bit predatory. So I'm just not into that. It was definitely too much and I'm glad I didn't have to read too far into this to see that I didn't want to anymore. The next one is Love That Journey For Me, which is the best series ender or overall series progression. And for that one, I'm going to be picking the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. So we have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. I need to reread this because I absolutely loved it when it was going on and I do feel like out of the books that I have read from Cassandra Clare, this was the best overall trilogy, but also the best ending. It was good and it was like, it. there's too many emotions that I have with this series. Um, but yeah, for me personally, this is something that I think about quite often lately. I need to reread it and it was just the best ride the whole time. Um, I will say I almost considered adding Jem as my ideal love interest until I finished reading Well Met. So just keep that in mind. I'm definitely a Jem fan more than a Will fan, although I still love him as well. But yeah, I just really, really love the series and the story the whole way through. Then we have Eat Glass, which is a book series or author that you broke up with. Now for me, if I'm considering the fact that I'm breaking up with an author, I would have had to been dating the author. So I feel like it has to be something, either the book series or the author, where I did enjoy it at first and then somehow I stopped enjoying it and decided it was not for me. Now I'm going with a book series on this one. I'm going to be going with the Strange Angels series by Lily St. Crow. This is a series that I ended up unhauling sometime last year, I want to say. I started reading them a few years ago, and at the time it was really hard to get copies. I don't know if they were completely out of print or it was one of those things where it was in between printings, but I read the first three books and really, really enjoyed them. But it took me a little while to find the fourth and fifth book in the series, and once I did find them, I didn't end up reading them right away. So a couple years ago, I ended up reading them as like audiobooks while I was working in the back at Barnes and Noble and again I really really liked the first three books. However, I got most of the way through the fourth one and ended up DNFing because the author seemed to be shoving sort of a love triangle down our throat and I could tell that she wanted us to root for the character that I did not want to root for. This is a series with vampires and werewolves and our main character is descended from um, the vampire. She's like a half vampire, I believe it is. And the two main love interests that we had were the character that she had met in the first book and he was sort of like geeky loner type of character who ended up getting bitten by a werewolf and like turning into one of them, but like a heightened version. And then the other one was another, I think, half vampire character who was so old that he wanted to date her mom. And that was the love interest that I could tell the author was wanting us to root for. And it got to the point where the author was just sort of torturing the other character in such a way that I, I couldn't enjoy myself reading the book because I liked that character so much better. And so I DNF'd. I got rid of the books. I don't plan on reading them ever again. I'm probably never going to get to them. And 
So this is definitely a series for me that I had to break up with. I liked the first three books, but I could not continue. Now, that is not to say that I don't like Lily St. Crow or Lilith St. Crow as her adult author name, pen name. I don't, like she has Lily St. Crow and then Lilith St. Crow for her different YA and adult books. I do actually have, I believe, some other adult books by her on my shelves that I really do want to get to. And so it is something that I might read and still enjoy at her as an author, but as for the series, I had to break up with it. And then we have very uninterested in that opinion, and that is just a popular opinion that you disagree with. And for me, I'm gonna have to go with the fact that I have seen a lot of things lately, especially in a readers group that I'm on on Facebook, where if you dislike a book, and you don't want to continue reading, you shouldn't rate a book necessarily low because you haven't finished reading the book. Now, I've also seen some stuff lately on Twitter where people were criticizing others that had rated a book low or as a DNF because the characterization of a character wasn't likable um, because according to them, if you had continued reading the book, you might have seen that they had character growth and then you would have enjoyed it and rated the book differently. Now, I am fully of the opinion that if you are not enjoying a book, you are allowed to DNF and rate it however you like. And for me personally, especially if I feel like I've read enough of it, I'm going to DNF and my DNFs are usually one star. Now, I also feel that if you're going to rate something low, explain why. Like, I like to write reviews for my books on Goodreads, especially if it's something that I didn't necessarily enjoy. And I try to not bash on anything, but I try to explain what trope or what happened that I did not enjoy, because there are probably other people that are really going to enjoy that. And if I just rated something as a one star and said it was horrible, they're not going to necessarily understand why and if i explain oh i didn't like it because it had characters that i didn't enjoy because of you know a couple reasons they might really enjoy that and decide that they want to try the book anyway so i'm just firmly of the belief that you can rate something any way you want i do not feel like you have to take in the author's feelings into consideration because i've heard that one before um I've heard, oh, books are hard to write. You don't want to rate it low based on A, B, C, D. I don't believe that. So that's, that's my opinion. And that's the end of the book tag. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to my channel. If you would like to see more videos, I do have videos up Mondays and Thursdays. So I will see you then. Bye.